Facebook employees have raised red flags internally about inappropriate use of the platform in some developing countries. According to documents obtained by The Wall Street Journal, employees found drug cartels were using the site to recruit hitmen. Human traffickers were also reportedly using the site to lure women into dangerous situations. After employees flagged these incidents, the documents show that Facebook did little to nothing at all. Jeff Horwitz is a technology reporter for The Wall Street Journal. He co-authored that report and joins me now. Jeff, can you tell us more about what kinds of posts Facebook employees found and how they violated the company's rules? Yeah, so I think the the issue here isn't that there is bad stuff on Facebook. There always will be and always has been bad stuff on Facebook, right? It's got 3 billion users nearly, and so there's always going to be something there. The problem here was that the company was turning a blind eye very consistently to, uh, in, in relation to cartels, uh, some really brutal stuff, basically cartels using the platform as a way to distribute videos showing them murdering people and terrorizing people. Um, and in the case of human trafficking, really large-scale arrangements in which entities were buying and selling the contracts of kind of indentured servants, usually to uh, the Persian Gulf. And so the thing that we found is that these problems, per Facebook's own reckoning internally, were the result of inattention. Um, and that, in fact, the only thing that really seemed to get Facebook to act on the human trafficking side was when Apple Inc. Uh, decided that they were going to threaten to kick Facebook's apps off of its uh, off of its app store um, if they didn't get it under control. And within days, a large amount of content, like we're talking 100,000 pieces of content, came down. Uh, so I think there's something kind of remarkable. That this is something the company just didn't act on until there was an external business threat. And it's kind of representative of a lack of investment in these things. Um, assuming that there aren't governments and media outlets in countries that are capable of holding them to account. I mean, what you're describing is is horrific, uh, and, and it's unconscionable that the company didn't react to these specific posts after they were flagged by their own employees until they faced financial pressure. Um, I, I will say a spokesperson for Facebook did comment for us, and they told The Wall Street Journal, your reporting, that the company has a comprehensive strategy for keeping people safe in countries at risk for conflict and violence. Do you feel like they are taking adequate steps to prevent the misuse of the site? Let me just rephrase that by asking about how the employees feel, and the employees have definitely concluded that they are not in many instances. I mean, there are there are plenty of internal notes noting the prevalence of human trafficking on Facebook, saying this should not be happening on our platform. We need to stop it. Uh, in in relation to cartel violence, there has been uh, the same types of warnings consistently. And I think one of the things that, that really sort of speaks to the fact that these aren't kind of isolated instances is Facebook's spending on moderation and content, um, a moderation of content in other languages outside of English is very, very weak compared to the English language stuff. So, for example, in Arabic, they literally can't understand major dialects of Arabic. They don't have the capacity in terms of spending on misinformation. They put 87 percent of their spending on detecting it into the U.S. Uh, and into, into English language content. So there is kind of a intentional neglect of portions of the world where the company itself understands the risks to people are much higher. That's really interesting, Jeff, in part because you also report that more than 90 percent of Facebook's monthly users are actually outside of the U.S. and Canada. So the fact that they aren't adequately paying attention to other languages than English and uh, and that, that problem. Um, but in this case, they did have employees that were flagging it who understood the language and were saying that this is this is not okay. Why didn't they take action in those cases? So it's a very small team, and in some instances, uh, after the Apple threat kind of kicked them into gear, um, they actually did a review and they noted that one of the reasons why they had not taken action previously on a lot of the content is because. They wish to respect uh, the local custom in some Gulf states uh, called the kafala system of basically indentured servitude of foreigners. And I mean, we're talking here about people who were maids and they were being, their contracts were being resold and they had no say in it. So obviously it 
kind of meets the criteria of forced labor on an international standpoint, but Facebook kind of was okay with it so long as they were brick and mortar operations. Uh, so as long as people were, were sort of selling other people in a brick and mortar fashion, then, then that was all right. I, I still have to say, Jeff, I don't understand, and, and it sounds like in part based off of your tone that you also don't understand why Facebook would think that that if it is a brick and mortar selling of a human being, that that's somehow acceptable. Um, l let me let me ask you about a big movement that's happening in Facebook because their chief technology officer, Mike Schreffer, announced that he's going to be stepping down next year. He's going to be replaced by Andrew Bosworth. What do you make of this leadership change? Do you think that it may have any effect on the problems that you've outlined? Uh, I think. Mike Schreffer has been kind of internally considered a very conscientious guy, someone who could kind of cover the technology uh, and the, you know, the, the, both the engineering chops and kind of the sense of humanity and consistency to think through kind of Facebook societal implications. Um, Andrew Bosworth is also a really smart guy, uh, and he's you know been working in in virtual reality for the company, but I think has taken a bit more of a you know, our goal is to make the best product possible and, you know, damn the consequences approach to um, at least how he's publicly spoken about these things. Not a necessarily a, uh, a sunny outlook for the future of these problems. Jeff Horwitz, thank you for your investigative work into shining a light on this, and thank you for joining. Thank you.